thighs that they're opposite. And we can also arrange sides in terms of the angles that they're opposite. Side opposite, the biggest angle is the biggest side. Side opposite, the smallest angle, smallest side. Angle opposite, the so smallest side is the smallest angle, and so on. So in uh, looking at number six, get my pad going here. For number six, uh, let's see what we got. So uh, use the angles and sides to order from smallest to largest. The smallest side is 23.7, so angle T is going to be the smallest angle. The next size side is this 35, so angle R is opposite that. That's going to be the next size angle. And then the largest side is 48, and angle S is opposite that. That's going to be the largest angle. So smallest to largest, we have TRS. Looking at number seven, the smallest angle is at T. So the side opposite that, which is SR, is going to be the smallest side. Next, we have the next angle in order is 60, angle R. ST is opposite that. That's got to be the medium sized side in the triangle. And then the biggest angle is S, which is 80. Side RT has to be the largest side of the triangle since it's opposite the 80. Looking at 8 here, uh, 3.8 is the smallest side, so angle C is going to be the smallest angle. 4 is the next size side, so angle B is the next size angle. And then 4.3 is the next size side, angle A is opposite that. So that one goes C, B, A. Let's move up. Looking at number 9, uh, the smallest angle is 25, so CD is the smallest size side. The largest angle is 120, which is D, so CE is going to be the largest side, so I'm going to put that on the other end. And then in between, we're going to have side DE, which is opposite the 35, so 25, 35, 120. We got C, D, D, E, C, E. Uh, for number 10, we have to figure out what angle R is. These add up to 114 degrees, so we need another 66 degrees to make the 180 for that triangle. 66 is the biggest angle, so side ST is opposite that. That's going to be the largest size side. We won't go small to large, though. The smallest angle is at T, so RS is the smallest side. Next, we have RT, opposite the 60. And then the largest side, opposite the 66, is ST. Same thing for 11, pretty much. The smallest side is the 12, so angle Q is opposite that. The next one up is 18. Angle P is opposite that. And then the next one up is angle R which is opposite the 20. That's the largest. So Q, P, R, to P. Let's move on. So uh, let's see what's going on with this. So the figure shows the position of three trees. There's the three trees. At which tree position is the angle between the trees the greatest? So we look at the side lengths. The, this is a 50 some, 53 feet. Opposite, that's the biggest side in this triangle. The angle at two is the biggest angle. 13, uh, they live on the same road. They can see a flagpole. The angle, oh, so let's kind of draw this out. They live on the same straight road from their balconies they can see a flagpole in the distance. The angle that each person's line of sight to the flagpole pole makes is the same. So the angle is the same. How do their distances from the flagpole compare? Well, now, if their balconies are the same height and the angle that they're looking at the flagpole at is the same, then the flagpole is going to be exactly halfway in between. 
Now that's assuming that their balconies are the same height. And if one balcony is bigger than another, it's really going to be hard to tell what's going on angle-wise. So I'm assuming with this question that their balconies are the same height. And if they're looking down at the same angle at the flagpole, same part of the flagpole, that means the flagpole must be at the midpoint. They're equidistant from the flagpole. So equidistant from the flag. That's assuming, again, that the balconies are the same height, which it doesn't exactly say in there. Okay, let's look at number 15. Now, all together, these have to add up to 180 degrees. So we can solve this by setting, adding these equal to 180 and find out what each angle measure is. We know that Z is a 90 already. So we've got, with the X's, we've got four X's. There's a 10 plus a 90, so 4X plus 100 equals 180. Take away 100, 4X's is 80. Divide by 4, x is going to be 20. So this angle x is going to be 2 times 20 plus 1. That's going to be 41. We already saw this one's a 90. And 2x plus 9 is going to be 49. So those are the angle measures. Uh, from smallest to largest, side opposite the smallest angle, which is the 41, is the yz side. And that's smaller than the side opposite the medium size angle, which is the 49. That's going to be the XZ side. So that goes in the middle. And that's going to be smaller than the largest side, which stops the biggest angle, which is the 90, which is this XY side. So in order, YZ is less than XZ is less than XY. Same idea for this one. We're going to add these all up. Add the X's, two, three, four X's. A minus 1 with a 6 is a 5, plus a 3 is an 8. So 4x plus 8 makes 180. Take away 8, 4x's is 172. Divide by 4, x is going to be, I think, 43. Uh, 4 times 40 is 160, 4 times 3 is 12. Yes, it works out. So x is 43. So that means that p is going to be a 42 degree angle. Um, Q is going to be a 49 degree angle, and M is going to be an 86 plus 3, which is going to be an 89 degree angle. So there we have our angle measures, and sides in order from small to large, opposite the smallest angle is MQ. Opposite the medium size angle is PM. And opposite the largest angle is PQ. So there we have the order from largest or smallest to largest for those side lengths. Let's move on. Let's look at number 17 here. So let's see. So uh, AY bisects angle A. So those two angles are congruent. BX by 6B. So those two angles are congruent. And Q is the intersection of AY and BX. Okay, so that's what we have. Suppose that BC is greater than AC. BC is greater than AC. BC being greater means angle A, the total angle here at A is going to be greater than the total angle opposite the BC side. Let me read that again. BC greater than AC. So if BC is greater than AC, the angle at B is smaller than the angle at A. So angle BAY versus AB, uh, ABX, ABY. No, B A Y, B to A to Y. So the way I'm looking at this is um, in terms of this B C greater than A C. So if B C is greater than A C, angle B is bigger. 
Now, if I bisect a big angle, I'm going to get half of a big angle. If I bisect a smaller angle than that, I'm going to get half of the smaller angle bisected. So angle B is greater than angle A. The measure of B is greater than the measure of angle A. Since each of these is bisected, the bisected angle is going to be one half the measure of angle B, and that's still going to be greater than one half the measure of angle A. So let's see what they're asking us. Compare BAY. This BAY angle is half the measure of angle A, and that's going to be smaller than the ABX angle, which is half the measure of angle B, which starts out bigger to begin with. So I don't know how to do that algebraically, um, but the idea is that since BC is greater than AC, angle B is greater than angle A. So angle BAY, which is half of B, is greater than angle ABX, which is half of A. Okay, let's look at number 18. Cinda claims that XC is congruent to YC if BC is greater than AC. Okay, so we're using the same diagram for number 18. So she says that XC and AC, let me erase what I've got marked on the diagram for this first problem that we did and see what we need to do for this next one. So I'm going to switch colors up also, see what we get. So let's see. Uh, so she claims that XC is congruent to YC if BC is greater than AC. So BC greater than AC. Now what we can get from that is if BC is greater than AC, angle B's measure is greater than the measure of angle BC greater than AC. BC goes with angle A, and BC is greater than AC. So the measure of angle B is less than the measure of angle C. BC, AC. So opposite AC, we have angle B. Opposite BC, we have angle A. So B is smaller than A. Now, if B is smaller than A, uh, let's look at side XC. X to C, if B is smaller than A, angle B is smaller than angle A. She's saying that XC, that C is, X to C is the same as Y to C. I'm not sure about this one, but I really don't see how um, she can make the claim that these are going to be congruent to each other. Let's look at the next one. If AQB is greater than BQY, so A to Q to B is greater than AQY, so this is greater than BQY, BQY. This one is greater than this one. Let's see what it does. Which side of ABQ has the greatest length? So we're talking about ABQ.
A Q B is bigger than B Q Y. So if A Q B is bigger than B Q Y, that means that this is going to be bigger than ninety degrees. Uh, if this is bigger than ninety. Which side has the greatest length? Using the smaller triangle here, this is a smaller size side here. So this is going to be a smaller angle, a smaller side side than this one. Um, so in A, B, Q, the largest length we can see is going to be AB. Let's look at number 21. Malik has three different squares. He arranges the squares to form a triangle. Based on the information, list the squares in order from the one with the least perimeter to the one with the greatest. So with squares, the bigger square is going to have the bigger perimeter. The smaller square is going to have the smaller perimeter. So we can kind of see here in looking at these, even though it might not be drawn to scale. If we have a 47 and a 54, that, that adds up to 101. 90, 101, which means this angle up here is a 79 degree angle. Three is going to be the largest square because it's got the largest sides. Opposite the 47, which is 2, that's going to be a medium-sized square. And opposite the, why did I do that right? Opposite the 54 is the medium-sized square. And opposite the 47 is going to be the smallest square. Based on the information, list the squares in order from one with the least perimeter. Least perimeter, the smallest square, is going to be this square, too is going to be smaller perimeter wise the perimeter of two is less than the perimeter of one which is less than the perimeter of three that's one way we could fix that one up okay we want to see which angle has the biggest measure using these combinations so we got one five and six so where's one there's one exterior angle so the exterior angle is bigger than either one of those. It's actually for the sum of these, so it's bigger than either one of those. So angle one's the biggest one there. Looking at 23, we have two, four, and six. So here's four, here's two. Exterior angle is two, four, and six. This exterior angle is going to be equal to the sum of those two. The angle with the biggest measure is going to be this angle, too. Looking at 7, 4, and 5, we've got 7, 4, and 5. Exterior angle, 4 and 5 are interior angles. This angle 7 is going to be bigger than either one of those others. Looking at 25, we've got 3, 11, and 12 for the angles. This angle 3 is going to be bigger than the sum of either one of those two. Looking at 26, we have 3, 9, and 14. So here's 9. Here's 3. And here's 14. So we can look at this as an exterior angle. Angle 3 is going to be bigger than either one of those. And then looking at number 27 here, we have 8, 10, and 11. Angle 8 is an exterior angle. 10 and 11 are remote interior angles with this bottom triangle. This angle 8 is going to be bigger than either one of those. It's actually equal to the sum of those, but it's going to be bigger than either one of those.